Tak farvel til Divok Origi. Godt tak her fra Cesco. Trækker væk fra Kunder til. Den er aflevering. Får han tilbage. Skal der ikke nu? This video is sponsored by ClipDraw, a software that we use to edit our videos. If you're interested in using this software too, please see the description below for affiliate links. The next Lewandowski, or a desperate alternative to Darwin Nunes and Erling Haaland. Just how good is Benjamin Sheshko? Sheshko is not an elite goal for it. Even in the Austrian league, his numbers fall far short of saying Erling Haaland. Positives are that he tends to get a lot of shots on target, which suggests that his technique is pretty consistent, but his conversion rate is pitiful, which suggests that he's not quite finding the corners, hasn't quite got that air of clinicality just yet. But the eye test seems to suggest that there's evidence here of a potential future golden boot winner. He's able to strike with his weaker foot pretty well, as we've seen that situation there. He's got a cool composure in front of goal. He's able to score far post goals like this, like a typical centre forward. This situation here, very clean clinical strike. I wouldn't say that his long shooting is as good as, say, a Harry Kane or a Darwin Nunez, as we've seen in Portugal. But he rounds the keeper here. He's got a generally wide range of finishing. So, yeah, he's not going to be the most spectacular goal scorer, but he's solid. He can get weak foot finishes in. One touch, bang, just like we see here on his weak foot, clinical, two foot. In terms of linker play, it's clear Seshko is no false nine, but an orthodox nine in the mold of a Lewandowski. His passing accuracy is higher than the likes of Nunez and Haaland, and he's more involved too. So that suggests that his link up play is a class above, it's more classier. He's not someone who's going to find it difficult to integrate in a possession based side. I think guys like Pep, Klopp and Ten Hag would enjoy having a centre forward like this who's more of a nuanced target man, more of a modern target man. I wouldn't say he's quite Zlatan Ibrahimovic in terms of his touch, but there's a lot to work with here. Seshko is around 6 foot 4 in height, which makes him an obvious target for the long ball and explains why he's featuring in so many aerial duels He's also brought back on corners to help the side defend and he's generally who they're looking for when they're attacking corners as well. Having said that, he doesn't score enough goals with his head compared to Haaland. And yeah, in terms of duels, his success rate is decent in the air but the eye test seems to suggest that he's got work to do to make his frame felt in these loose aerial ball situations. It's worth bearing in mind he is 19 so as he fills out, he will be better at competing and using his weight better once his feet have left the ground, but there's signs of it being a potential weapon once he's got some experience under his belt and some coaching as well. Grazie per lui, esce molto bene dalla retroguardia a Butrik che poi perde un pallone velenoso, allora può ripartire. Statistically, Seshko is a solid dribbler who can progress a game often and look to do so fairly often. He reminds me a tad of Harry Kane in the way that he carries the ball, but I'd say he's got greater flair in his dribbles. Unlike someone like Nunez, who's more of a rugged Cavani style dribbler, Seshko looks a bit more refined, a bit more technically gifted. And out of Haaland and Nunez and him, he gives me the most Zlatan vibes. He's got a lot of flair in the way that he beats a man. He can leave people for dead. He does it in a very stylish way, like we see here. Little nutmeg. He's quite cheeky in the way that he plays. Once again, here, brilliant hold up play, little step over, gets away. So he's. Got that sort of five-star, four-star skill in his locker. So leads. Little chop there, filthy. In terms of movement off the ball, Seshko is not the quickest, but he's got enough pace to get away from defenders with clever runs over their shoulders. He's got that varied movement in that he's comfortable in making runs into wide areas and facilitating progression, acting as that wide target man. Generally, an intelligent player, but I wouldn't say his movement is as electrifying or as elite as Haaland or Nunes, who are prodigious in this respect. Perhaps the biggest shock of this research was Havertz's stats, which were really poor for someone who's a cam slash false nine type of player. Very poor creative stats. As for Seshko, probably the weakest area of his game, if we're being honest. Doesn't really 
demonstrate that really goat level finesse with his passing or vision. He's more of a nine rather than a 9.5. He's not someone who gives me that Zlatan vibe in terms of his creativity, but he could turn into more of a Lewandowski rather than a Haaland. He's got good cutbacks. So in and around the box, he's very sharp. We see the situation here. Brilliant back heel, you know, eyes in the back of his head almost. So anything that's like a quick wall pass in and around the box, flicks, he's capable of unlocking defences. He's also got a good sort of long range pass. So this is more of a Harry Kane type pass. So he's definitely got potential to be a nine and a quarter rather than a 9.5. Statistically, Seshko doesn't hit many long passes. He prefers to connect to teammates along the floor with wall passes or receive the ball quickly and then run with it. But that doesn't mean he can't spread the play when he needs to or unlock defences. As we've mentioned, Harry Kane style like that. He can even hit overhead kick long passes. So clearly this is a player who's comfortable with hitting a long pass when he needs to. If you look at this situation here, vicious dip, laser like accuracy. I think the player who's receiving it made the error, not him. What's wonderful is that he can slow up the play inside the box and then utilize that dinked long pass inside the box. I can imagine him grabbing a lot of assists from that type of situation. What I'd love to see him in is a team with wing forwards and he drops a bit deep and then finds them with that Harry Kane style pass to a Son Heung Min. Seshko is a defensive beast of a centre forward. He's the first line of defence and he takes his role seriously. And that's not surprising since he's been schooled by Red Bull. He's very intelligent in the way that he presses, he's very aggressive and he's got the sprint endurance despite having such a large frame. So that makes him very, very effective at consistently employing the press. He's also surprisingly nimble, so that makes him an effective ball winner. He's useful from set pieces from a defensive perspective. If you look at his work right here, you know he's won the header from the corner and then he's making the sprint to the other side to push them back. So someone who is perfect for a modern day football system Someone who would work for Ten Hag, Klopp, Pep, you name it. They would want a centre forward like this because he's willing to put in the hard yards. Tactically, Salzburg play with a 4-3-1-2. They believe it's the best system for verticality, for pressing, counter-pressing. And although Seshko has had to rotate with other centre forwards, it was looking like he would be the go-to choice of forward for the following season. Now, what he brings to the table is obviously that work rate. He's able to press from the front. He's also able to make those runs off the ball. Once the team's won the ball, he's ready to receive it, get shots off on goal quickly. So they have a very direct style of play. He's a good fit for Ten Hag's style of play at Manchester United because Ten Hag likes playing with traditional centre forwards. Why? Well, his style of play is slightly different to Pep and Klopp in that he doesn't really need a false nine. He's someone who actually believes in crossing. He encourages his wingers to cross the ball as well as his fullbacks, whereas with Trent, Liverpool tend to get crosses in through him. With Robertson, it's usually cutbacks, but you don't really see crosses from Mane or Salah. With Pep, you barely see any crosses unless it's like cutback style situations. So with Ten Hag, he wants that tall target man who's also quite technical, can join in with the play, but also get in the box as a target man. So he's a great fit. For Chelsea, as we've spoken about with Havertz, doesn't really have much of a goal for it at the moment. Yes, he has the work rate up top, which is what Tuchel appreciates, and his link-up play is good, but his creativity has been slightly lacking. So Seshko gives you that opportunity to get in a guy who's potentially going to be a big goal scorer, as well as offer the work rate that Havertz provides, and the link-up. And he can move Havertz deeper in the lineup and make him more of a number 10, a wide number 10 in that setup. With regards to PSG, who've also been linked with him, it's difficult to see how he's going to play Messi, Neymar and Mbappe behind him, but there's a clear centre-forward spot available there for Seshko. In conclusion, if I'm being honest, I'm very excited about Seshko. He's someone who seems to be able to blend elements of the perfect modern-day centre-forward. You know, depressing, he's got the touch of a more elite centre-forward. Someone like Nunes is technically quite raw, but there's that Cavani rugged element with Seshko. He's got more of a technical feel to him. 
He's more nimble. His flair in terms of his footwork is definitely quite elite. Obviously, he's coming from a very weak league. So, you know, there's question marks as to whether he looks better than what he does because of the league that he's playing in. But Red Bull Salzburg have produced players like Mane, Haaland. You know, a lot of good players have come from the Austrian league. And if you actually watch the league, the tempo of the football is quite high. It's quite fast paced. It will take him time. He's only 19, but there's a lot of potential here to work with. He definitely reminds me a little bit of Lewandowski. He's not quite as technical as Zlatan, but there's elements in terms of that first touch when he plucks it out of the air. It is quite special. So yeah, for me, that £60 million is definitely worth a punt because he could become one of Europe's elite centre forwards. There's absolutely no doubt about it. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, share and subscribe and see you guys again next time. Bye.